DJ Pro AI Hidden Features 2022. I'm DJ Spiegelspin, and I'm gonna show you all of them. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys some of the new features that were added in the updates this year, and also some classic hidden features that I might have shown you in before, or you guys might have used in the past, but you stopped using it for whatever reason, and now you might want to start doing it again. So let's get started with the first hidden feature. So we're in classic mode, and if we go to the mixer section, now we have control of the volume and control of the filters, and also over here, we have the gain. But what they added was this section. If you press EQ, now you have the filters and you have a mixer and you could still control the volumes because they put them on top of the levels. So now in classic mode, you have a full mixer that you could do the lows, the mids and the highs and filters and you could control the volumes over here. So this is my favorite screen to mix, my favorite way to mix with classic mode because you just have access to everything except the waveforms. If you want the waveforms, you just press the next button. And then you go over here and you could do neuro mix EQs. So it does the drums, the harmonics, and the vocals. And then here you could you have the neuro mix crossfaders. So you could bring in and out with the mixer. So our next hidden feature is gonna be on the actual record deck. These record decks are, were programmed so well and they react just like regular record decks. So a lot of people may have never tried this, but you could actually adjust the time in the song, like the for, skip to the beginning and skip to the end, just like you would on a real record with the needle. Also, if you spin it back, it goes with gravity. So doing the spin back is a really cool, easy transition that you could do. So don't look past that. And now the coolest one, which a lot of people might not have used, is you touch the jog wheel with one finger and it's just like regularly touching the jog wheel. But if you do two fingers, what it does is it's gonna cut the crossfader. And this is for scratching. So you can make some really cool scratches just by using two fingers and then it controls the crossfader as you scratch. Definitely check that out and if you feel like scratching, you could scratch away. So it sounds really cool. Another feature that's over here is you have to Get rid of the middle section, so press this waveform button twice and you'll get the regular two decks view. And what you could do here is you could press this button. This is kind of like a power on and power off. So you press that and it slowly will start. And if you press it again, it'll slowly stop. This is cool for doing transitions where you're dropping, uh, say you're going from 120 BPM to 85 and you could do this as a transition because it makes a really cool sound when you turn it off. So it gives you that slowing down kind of sound and it sounds really, really cool. So don't forget that that button is there. And then also they give you these arrows over here. This is to um, tap and adjust the tempo really quickly. So don't forget that that's there. Another thing that I don't think a lot of DJs use, but I use it every time I DJ, is up here, if you hold it in, let's get a record over on this track. So we got a record onto this track. And now what you could do, if you hold the other, instead of just pressing the music button, you hold it in and you have three options. So load next will load the next song in the playlist. Double will duplicate the record that you have and it'll play it at the same time. So here we go. So this song is on over here and now we're gonna double 
and it's playing at the same time. So why would you want to have this feature? Well, a lot of old school DJs, when they didn't have any effects, no looping, and none of that, it was just two turntables and a mixer, they would get two copies of the record. So if they wanted to do a loop, you would have one song playing a couple bars ahead, and one song playing a couple bars below, and you could do cool cuts and stuff like that and loop the song around that way. Or you could just keep one on a loop and then keep the song playing. So doubling is cool for tricks like that. But the real reason I use it is, let's say you load up a song that you haven't marked the cue points and you don't know how it ends, then you could double the song and you could listen to the ending in your headphones. So you're listening to the ending in your headphones while the song is playing on the other deck and then you know, oh, there's vocals at the end, I gotta take those out if I wanna mix, or it ends like that, it has a weird outro, I'm not gonna play that, and you know how your song is gonna end. So, definitely always mark your cue point and always have your playlist ready with cue points, but if someone has a request or you're in a jam, double the record, you'll thank me later. Okay, moving right along. Okay, over here is the BPM section. So right next to the BPM, there's this really small white music symbol. If you click that, it is the key lock. So now you could do large BPM adjustments and it won't sound like chipmunks or it won't sound slow motion. So it's a small button. You guys might have overlooked that, so that's that. And then in the BPM, you could change the range all the way up from 8% to 20 to 75%, and you could invert it. So you, you bring it up, it goes down. You bring it down, it goes up. So that's what you could do there. So now let's go over. You press the middle button. This is your setting a screen. So one thing that they added was this DJ school, which is kind of cool, but it's kind of taken away from my thing because I teach people how to DJ. But... Okay, so that's new there. All the way to the left here, this is for gesture control. I don't know if anybody uses this feature, but it's a really innovative feature where you could use your hands to scratch and do other stuff. It's a little finicky and it doesn't always work that great, but it's really cool that they put it in there. And then over here we have our record. You guys could record anything from the decks or anything going on in DJ Pro. So you could record loops, you could record samples, beats, and stuff like that. But you cannot record if you have a song from a streaming service loaded into a deck. A lot of people asked about this and they're saying, why can't I record? It's because even if the song's not playing, it, you'll get this message. Recording not available while using songs from streaming service. So if you guys want to record your sets with streaming service for your own personal use, you guys could just do a screen recording and you'll get perfect audio and you could actually see what you're doing on the screen. So that's one way around it. And then over here, they added auto mix. They made auto mix so much more accessible. So instead of going here and then going to auto mix, you could just right there. And now you could start an auto mix, you could stop an auto mix and you could adjust the settings. So they, they made it so it's seamless. You could go from mixing manually and then if you gotta go, go use the bathroom or you wanna get something to eat or something, you could go right here, boom, into an auto mix. And then we start an auto mix. And then you get this button up here to stop the auto mix. So to stop it, you don't even have to press this middle button anymore. You could press the button right here that they added. So it's really cool. And that was one of my favorite updates that they did in 2022. So now I'm gonna show you guys in the actual settings Split output, what that does is if you have an adapter and then you could have your headphones and then the music playing out if you're not using a controller. Um, I think it's a little bit outdated because with the USB-C iPads, you're going to need a bunch of adapters and then it's not very reliable and it might get unplugged. So Ableton Link, this is really cool. There's a lot of apps such as Core Gadget and other type of loops and drum machines, garage bands and stuff like that. And you could link it and you could be DJing with friends and stuff like that. I made a lot of videos specifically on that so you could check it out. And then here's one hidden feature that you might not know. And this is how I learned everything I know about DJ Pro is the user manual. You have full access to the whole user manual cover to cover right in the app. So if you guys want to know the beat grid, you go to five section 541. So... 
and it's really there's pictures they they make it very clear for you and you can learn everything i've sat in on my couch and read this cover to cover probably like seven or eight times and the more you read the more things you discover so definitely if you're on the bus or if you're on a plane or something read the user manual and become an expert all right appearance you could change the record appearance so over here it is you could have it be just the picture or like the record cover in the middle or you could have it be the full deck i like to keep it on the full deck i think that's really cool and then you could show the tape marker that's where you put your cue points old school djs used to tape the actual record or draw on it with crayon and then they would know where the spots are so that is kind of a pays homage to the old school and then back in the settings we go to mixer you could adjust the crossfader curve so the default one is a regular even slider and then if you go down the cut it's more it, it's more responsive and it, if you guys use scratching and stuff like that then you can adjust the crossfader curve and then now they added this eq type you go from classic to I isolator so classic it means if it's all the way down on the eqs that you'll still hear some some sound and if you have it on on classic then it's different so test out both of them and see which one you like better eq type neuro mix eq so it's drums harmonics and vocals or you could switch it to drum bass and melodic so it depends on the style of music that you're doing and whatever is more comfortable for you but you could get so much more out of neuro mix if you adjust that correctly and then filter resonance high low this is that um, the whooshing sound that's in the filter. So if you guys don't like that, you guys can adjust that down. Auto gain. I always keep it on auto gain because a lot of the controllers for DJ Pro don't have a gain knob. And then they give you this little tiny slider that's really hard to use for gain. So I just put it on auto gain and basically forget about it. So now we could go over to library and over here you could adjust the streaming quality. So you could go from normal, hi-fi, however you want. I don't recommend changing it because it'll take longer to load. Now we go over here to um, log out of title. So all the streaming services that you are logged into, you could log out over here. So this is if you're trying to maybe log on on another device or if something got frozen and you want to log out and log back in, this is where you can find it. I had a lot of trouble finding where that was when I wanted to log out. And then now, advanced, there's nothing really to see here. It's just the, the recording formats and stuff like that that I never really adjust. And now here's MIDI devices. This is very important. You see where it says Bluetooth MIDI devices? That is where you go if you're using a Bluetooth controller. You don't go to your regular settings and then look for bluetooth that's what i did and i ended up not buying the controller because at the place i'm like oh it's not connecting it doesn't work and the person working there didn't know that because they weren't a dj pro user so if you want to connect the bluetooth you could do that and then crossfader cutting mode well, that's when you have a controller you just move the crossfader a tiny bit and it cuts it it's really good for scratching really good for doing the chirp scratch so i always keep that on but it's up to you if you guys want to do that so thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something new and found something that you didn't know was already there. I'm going to make part two and part threes of this video. And let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions or if you want me to show you how to do something specifically. And if you like learning about DJing with the iPad and DJing with DJ Pro, subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends. Thank you.